Hello everyone, Attack Power here with a nice little weekend update from Eugen for some upcoming stuff for Steel Division 2. So they already released, if you didn't see, they released an update about the new uh, Army General thing uh, coming out soon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, new Army General thing coming out soon. And uh, actually we can look here if it, there it is. Uh, we can really quick go over this. So basically they are going to be doing the Battle of Dukla Pass. Which a lot of people guessed it's in in the uh, Polish Slovak border that area. Uh, so September to late ninety four. They're sticking to that time zone again. Stop asking for things like the Pershing and stuff that come way after this point. I mean two six two same thing. You know these units don't show up in this time frame, so they're not going to put it in. They've been pretty hard lined about you know their timeline of where they're putting stuff. Um, so the army general campaign is going to be this battle of Dukla pass. Uh, so we're going to see some more Czechoslovakian units, um, just basically some more, some more Soviet units, things like that. Um, obviously it would appear, I guess it'll be mostly Czechoslovakian units on the allied side. And then obviously a mix of German units and I don't know what they'll mix else they'll mix in there. I, I again, it's generally historically based. So, I mean, if there were Ukrainian, I mean, if there are uh, Ukrainian, excuse me, if there were like Hungarian units and stuff there, then I assume they will show up in that that campaign. And remember, this doesn't mean that the new DL. So they have the they have a the army general campaign coming out. That's a separate thing. And then they're coming out with a tribute, which is usually where they take like a singular battle and they pull a bunch of divisions out of that battle. That does not mean they're going to use this battle for the tribute DLC with the new divisions. Uh, and in fact, it's kind of unlikely almost, I feel like, uh, that they will because th this will already be there sort of thing. I, I don't think they will. Um, I I'm pinning my guess on market garden. Uh, Operation Market Garden. That that is my my stab in the dark. If I had to take a stab in the dark, but anyway, getting to the meat and potatoes of today's thing, uh, they're doing some division reworks of some older divisions, which is great to see. I mean, it's definitely time for this. There, a lot of older divisions are kind of obsolete. Not that they're bad per se, but they've just like they've kind of fallen behind based on the power creep of the game. And and I don't think the power creep of the game is like absolutely absurd, but we all know it happens, right? They release a new DLC. It's got new divisions. They want the new divisions to sell. They want the new divisions to be popular. And, uh, you know, they make them just that teeny bit stronger than the last group. Um, and and, and it, it shows, right? And usually then they pair back a little bit and they get things back into alignment, generally speaking. But yeah, I mean, the game, obviously, it's hard to avoid power creep in any video game because they want things to sell. And I'm not going to knock them for the business practice of releasing things that people actually want to buy because otherwise there's no point in making them, right? But anyway, bit of balancing work here. Uh, rebalancing several divisions for a while with the launch of Steel Division 2. Set ourselves a long plan via unrealized rework of two existing Norman divisions, 3rd Fulsham Jaeger and 21st Panzer. Okay, so this these are two divisions that have really fallen to the wayside. 3rd Fulsham Jaeger like sitting like C tierish right now and 21st Panzer definitely C tier and only really usable on like two or three maps where it's like worth even bringing this unit, this division out. So let's see what they're going to do this. Uh, another thing. And we realized more fine tuning could be done. It was all the root. So yeah. So we've introduced some battle groups, several, including, okay. So they're looking at these, these tribute to D day and back to war expansions, artistic license versus history. Uh, in Normandy 44, it featured some artistic license while Steel Division 2 veered following more accurate historical tables of organization, equipment, and orders of battle. So basically, the builds of the divisions, they try to keep relatively historically accurate. Uh, we're not going to get into whether the gameplay itself is historically accurate. It is a video game. Naturally, it's not going to be. It wouldn't be fun if it was exactly historically accurate. It really wouldn't. Like, if we're being honest with ourselves, it'd be a completely different game, and it probably wouldn't be very fun. Right. So we're just talking the actual division makeups here. Um, we gave third Falsch Jaeger some Luftwaffe Jaeger attachment because they're both Luftwaffe in real life. 16th Luftwaffe field division was disbanded. Its personnel used to reinforce the 21st Panzer division and other infantry. Meanwhile, third Falsch Jaeger, <laughs> excuse me, was in turn reinforced by a regiment of the green Falsch division. So new Falsch division, uh, which we treated as regular paratroopers. So long story short, after Mad Matt punished himself severely by putting himself in a cold shit. <laughs> I gotta give him credit. It's funny. <laughs> Self-imposed reflective timeout. We got ready to fix some of these inconsistencies. Okay. So Falsham Jaeger rework here. All right, let's see what they're doing. 
Uh, upcoming re while third fall training is the main focus of the rig balance, we have extended changes in all in-game full stream meter. Okay, so that means first and fourth full stream meter are going to be seeing some changes. I don't know if this is going to knock fourth full stream meter out of its S tier best division in game spot, but it might, it, maybe it'll make them even better. Who knows? Because if they're trying to make third full stream meter better, I would assume the balance changes will help fourth. First Fall Stream Jaeger could use some help. That's fine. But third, for fourth Fall Stream Jaeger, we all know, does not need any help. So <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not so sure about this. Third Fall Stream Jaeger, the division will lose all its Luftwaffe here. I'm fine with that. They were kind of useless. Um, and I know some people argue they are useful. And I, uh, me personally, I just don't. They did not make the division any better. It's still in the same place. Existing Fall Stream Jaeger will be renamed Fall Stream Jaeger FG42s to differenti differentiate from the new Fall Stream Jaeger load loadouts. Okay, so they're going to have different versions of the Fall Stream Jaeger now. Okay. Uh, the G43 and FG42 small arms were not that common. Yeah, truthfully, that is true. I don't all these false are like wielding these things like they were commonplace. They really like the, the FG42 especially was extremely rare. Um, you know, and just really was never made in big enough numbers to even fully equip any false Jaeger division. Uh, we have created several loadouts to reflect better the different diversity. Okay, so false Jaeger ZF. Squad with MP40s, Car 98s, and two MG42s plus a sniper rifle. Uh, third fall senior was rather well equipped with these scopes. Oh, Eugene, you're just going deeper into this like sniper spam hole. Not a big fan of that. I mean, obviously, it'll make the division better, and that's great for people who like the fall senior division, but like, I don't feel like the thing this game needs is more snipers. I, I, I think that's part of the issue right now with the way the meta sits is that just sniper spam is just a thing and it, you, you almost have to do it to like stay competitive. Uh, I mean, and, and get, instead of MG34s being MG42s, this unit is actually better, maybe? It, it might actually be better than the normal one. It depends on squad size and everything. I mean, we are going from G43s to Car 98s. That's definitely a downgrade, but the MG34 to MG42 is a huge upgrade. And the sniper rifle is a sniper rifle equivalent to two FG42s. It might be. Honestly, it, it, it may be. I, I'm not even... The extra range is 100% a massive upgrade. Um, This, yeah, I th this unit might actually just be straight better than this. I, I'm actually kind of confident it is. Uh, Fulcher Meager MG34 is as above, but retaining MG34s and using a Panzer. So this is like, so this, this is just, this is just a worse. So this is worse. Th this is a worse unit. This is a, a, a notable downgrade because you lose the FG42s and you're not picking up any MG42s or anything like that. So essentially they're just taking the MG42s away and you're getting car 98s as well. So this is just a, this is a full downgrade on this one. This unit is definitely worse. I hope this unit is cost like. Honestly, probably like 30 points. Because this just sounds like a normal... Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, Panzerfaust. This is basically just a Panzergren. I mean, that that's what this is. This is a Panzergren. This is a Panzergren MG34. I mean, it might be a chunkier Panzergren MG34, but it's a Panzergren MG34. So this should be 30 points. This should probably stay 40 points. I mean, this, I hope, stays 40 points. Um, And then the Fulsham Jaeger, not FG4, just Fulsham Jaeger, gets MP40, Car 98, and one MG42. More soldiers in squad, but less experience representing the fifth Fulsham. Okay, so this is a chunky grenadier squad. I'm gonna guess this is gonna be 25 points with a single machine gun. Shouldn't be worth more than that with a with one machine gun, even if it's an MG42. Um, so I'm 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 guessing it's gonna be 25, 30, 40 points. And this this is good for the division. I mean, I'm not this variety will really help. Uh, because then you'll actually have some cheaper units to bring in to fill in the gaps. The big problem with third falsion here is every infantry squad you call in just costs the same as a light tank. And you usually don't get that much value out of it because infantry die pretty fast. So it, it, it's hard to use this division efficiently. So adding in some of these you know, cheaper units down here will actually really help a lot to give this division a little bit of flexibility. While the third fall stream has eight cards of FG42, and now it only has two, the other six will either be the ZF or the MG34, along with additional of these guys replacing the Luftwaffe in later. Okay, so these don't come into later. So you're still going to be phase locked, but you might be able to get some 30 point fall stream Jaegers in A phase, which should really help out a lot. Buff changes will also affect other fall stream Jaegers. So first fall stream will replace one of its three 
FG42s with the ZF one. So it's getting the super strong one. So it's not actually getting cheaper ones, though. So first of all, Shoemaker will not get any more efficient. But the truth is it has the Grenadier MG42s anyway, which is like a cheaper version of this, probably. So this is should help them out. It's not going to like change the world on this division, but it should help them out. Historically, fourth Volschmeier never received its consignment of FG42, which means the current six cards of Volschmeier are going to be replaced by four cards of MG34s and two cards. Oh, this is a buff. Oh, oh, this is a buff because now you're basically just getting the cheaper Volschmeiers, the Panzer. You're basically getting Panzergrens and a sniper version that's, in my opinion, probably a little stronger than the normal one. At least it feels that way. Here's my guess. This, Upon even more thought, this one still kills faster. Like, So this one will actually kill units faster, but this one will pin units down faster, which is honestly more important. So like when it's like greenhouse versus greenhouse fighting, this one will perform much better. If a unit is walking across the open, this one will still like wipe it out faster. So, yeah. Very interesting. I, 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 I doubt that this is a nerf. <laughs> I strongly doubt this is a buff. I strongly consider this being a buff to fourth false mirrors, as if that division needs any sort of buff at all. Now, some love for twenty first Panzer. Okay, so obviously the Luftwaffe Jaegers they're taking from third false go are going over to twenty first false twenty first Panzer. I don't think that change. Well, that might help a little bit. I feel like the division needs another slot of infantry though. Like, if you're going to add this unit in and you actually want to make use of it, you need to add another slot to their infantry tab. 21st Panzer didn't use a Grilla for support. They used their own specific SDKFZ 135-1 instead. The same vehicle was used to replace the Homo in artillery bat battalions as we already depicted in the game. This is why we have reworked the SDKFZ 135 as a fire support gun replacing the Grilla, which has been removed. Okay? Does it have the infinite range like the other, like the BT-42 and stuff? The same SDKFZ has been duplicated under the Lorraine. And given the very same stats, it will replace the 135 in the Artie tab. So it will have the Artie, like, indirect fire mode, I guess? I'm not 100% understanding exactly what they're doing here. The same has been duplicated under the Lorraine 150 name. And given the very same stat, it replaces it in the Artie tab. So, yes? I'm not really, I, I honestly can't tell. I'm going to assume it has indirect fire like the new ones do. Like the uh like the 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 Cromwell and the the BT42 that have the infinite range now. Another defining feature of 21st Panzer is that it two entire companies of Pack 43. So you're getting another card of Pack 43s. That that's not a, that's not like super helpful. I don't see many situations where you need two cards of Pack 43s. 10v10 maybe, but I don't think they last long there. The uh, the Werfer and the U304 flat cards were also increased to better match historical numbers. Okay, I mean, that's cool. Availability increase. That's fun. Another rework concerns the attached Panzer Abteilung 503, which made up two companies of regular Tiger E's and only one of the mighty Koenig's Tigers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, you King Tiger lovers. This heavy tank battalion only arrived in Normandy in the theater in July, a good month after the battle started. This means the heavy armor will arrive later in game. The four cards of 1-2 Koenig's Tigers are now being reworked into a single card with 2-4 availability in B and C. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, that... Ooh. I would call that a nerf. I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's a buff in availability, technically speaking, but now you're being phase-locked to B and C. I mean, I guess how often are you calling it in an A? Rarely, probably. Rarely. 10v10ers, this is a big nerf if, if you're playing 10v10 and king tigers are like the reason you're playing this division this is a gigantic nerf if you're playing 1v1 and trying to play this division i would call it a buff because now instead of having to spend you know two cards to get three between one and a and two and b now you're spending one card to get two and b um and honestly you shouldn't be using more than two king tigers like when it really comes down to it so 10v10 massive nerf 1v1 uh, buff-ish. Not that this makes the big difference in this division, but honestly, if you're playing this division, that's why you're playing it. You're playing it to play the King Tiger. Uh, two additional cards of Tiger E's with 4-6 available. Okay, but th this sucks. This this phase lock kind of sucks hard. Uh, but it's two additional, so you still might have some Tigers in A phase. I don't really know exactly. I don't play the division very often. Then also, First Pencherna. Not all changes are so. First Pencherna is getting some fun here. First Pencherna landed in Normandy with shortage of personnel. 
However, the formation with Second Blinde was the only division for which the replacement issue improved during the course of battle with volunteers flocking in. These came from two sources, German POWs of Polish origins, uh, having been pressed into, into the hair and a large community of local Polish miners in Normandy willing to join the division. As a result, we, will add, we have added a large veterancy-locked B and C card only of Rechrushi infantry on par with second DB's volunteers. I mean, honestly, volunteers are pretty good. So if they're like that, that's that's pretty good. If I'm remembering the unit correctly, I'm pretty sure these guys are pretty dope. If they're the ones with like the um, the M1 carbines and stuff, these things actually put out a ton of damage. So if that's what these guys are like, and I'm thinking the right thing, then these this is a pretty nice like bonus. As we made aware, first Pinchera's tank destroyers, although generically labeled as M10s, underneath were historically two variants, Achilles and Wolverines. So now that we've removed the two cards of the former and added one of the latter unit. Interesting. Okay, so now you'll have Achilles slash Wolverines in the division? Okay. It, it, I don't think that's a big change. Wolverines and M10s are identical. Um, we added a single phase card, a phase card of Staghounds, double vetted because there were only two. I mean, that I don't think that changes much about the division. A reminder, when the next pass is released, make sure to double-check your things. You'll have all kinds of new Fulschmeager and all that good stuff. Interesting. Okay. I mean, seems like interesting changes. Um, I don't think 21st is going to... I don't think this division suddenly becomes good. I think this just... Uh, unless they add a slot to the infantry tab, I don't... Maybe you fit one of these in now. Maybe. Um, the, the King Tiger thing is like whatever. It sucks if you're playing 10v10. Like this is a bad change for 10v10. If you're playing normal 1v1, I don't think it's a big difference for this division. Falschermeyer division, this could be a pretty big change. Third Falschermeyer might be playable again, potentially. Potentially. Because there are a lot of good things about that division. You know, great mortars and all that kind of stuff. Pretty good support stuff with the LG 42s. You know, you get Stugs. Falschermeyers are still Falschermeyers. Like they're still good. Um, expensive, but good. So, you know, and it has a great air force, so maybe third Falschmeyer back on the map. First Falschmeyer, I, I doubt we see a big change to its playability. Fourth Falschmeyer feels like it only gets better, or it stays the same, honestly. I, I don't think changing the Falschmeyers is going to make that division bad. It's just going to kind of either make it better or not really change it, because you're using a lot of Italian infantry anyway, so like the Falschmeyers were just kind of like one or two Falschmeyers sprinkled in here and there. It doesn't appear like they're changing Falschmeyer Pioneers. So Fulshamir Pioneers are staying the same. They're still very, very strong and one of the most efficient Pioneers in the game in terms of power versus cost. Uh, so it doesn't look like they're changing that. So that that's still probably going to be one of your go-to units just in general because they're very strong. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, should be a nice little change of mix up things. I hope they keep looking at other divisions like this, maybe even like changing some slot costs and things. It might be time for that. Some older divisions, their slot costs are just awful and like, makes them really hard to be good. And maybe if some of those things got balanced a little bit down, uh, it could really help make some other divisions playable again that aren't so playable. Like, they're not even bad because of their units. They're just bad because of the, like, the build of the deck sucks or you can't get the stuff you need or you can't get enough of what you want and, and so on and so forth. So hopefully they go back into some of these older divisions and do some more tinkering, especially of slot costs, to help make those divisions come back out, come back to life. But if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and consider supporting all over on Patreon to really help the channel and follow me over on Instagram. Thanks a bunch, guys, and have a fantastic day.